yeah, now I could just keep going on and on and on with all of this stuff. Um, but I think I'll just um, come back to this one here and um, at our research station where we're, uh, where we're doing a pretty nice job of integrating um, forestry into uh, agricultural landscapes. This has actually um, got 120 species, 150 species of um, trees in this system in an arboretum of useful species and about 100 odd, 120 odd species of pasture all in a layout. And what happens is, um, can I do that? Oh, I can do without the bloody thing. Um, that all of the water comes from that gully. Can you see the gully from the contours there? All of the water comes from the gully and when it rains heavily, all of the water actually sits out here. So instead of the water making its way into the valley, we're actually totally rehydrating the ridges. Um, so we're still getting enough water in the valleys to water them, but we're just getting a much more even flow of water over the landscape. And we're doing it in a way that all of the rows are actually equidistant apart, apart as opposed to this sort of chaotic pattern where we use contours. And this is a fairly common um, picture of agricultural landscapes across the United States where we've used contours. Contours actually, and these contour banks actually dehydrate the landscape. So you've done a, the soil conservation um, boys have actually, um, and girls have um, actually done a wonderful job of, of reducing the amount of soil erosion, but at the same time they've still continued to cause the um, dehydration of the landscape because the water still ends up in the valleys. Um, it actually is directed to, by, by, to the valley by the pattern of use. And it's a very difficult pattern to actually use machinery on, which is another thing. 